Hey everybody, uh, tonight we're going to talk about my new native tank here, and I got a lot I want to talk about with it, so I've decided what we're going to do is we're going to break it down into separate videos, and each one we're going to discuss a different aspect of it. So tonight I want to talk about how I prepared my wood, how I prepared my rocks, and why I did it the way I did it. And we'll just have a little discussion about that. I've had a lot of people ask me. I've been promising a video about it specifically for a while now. So this is it. Um, one of the issues that I've discussed is the size of the pieces of wood I've put in here. They're huge. And I just don't have any way to treat them in a traditional sense. Normally, uh, with wood, you can soak it in... Uh, water with bleach in it or you can put it in your oven and you can bake it at 200 degrees for a little while uh, of course that will dry it out and you'll have a difficult time getting it to sink but there are ways you can treat wood um, personally and this may as well uh, be one of the first things I say I would not do this with say my Garami tank or my 125 I would not go out to my local stream or my reservoir and collect pieces of wood like this and put them in those tanks you'd probably be okay but personally I would not be willing to risk it I don't know enough about the type of organisms that could be on there or anything else a small piece of wood that I could bake in the oven or something I'd be a little more apt to do that um, but usually when it comes to the woodwork, I generally just buy what I need. I don't want to take the risk on putting something from the outdoors in a fish tank. Now rocks are a little different story. Rocks, all my rocks are collected either from my yard or from local stream sources. And those can be treated very thoroughly and very easily. They're non-porous the way wood is. And that's the issue with wood is there's depth to it you know who knows what's living deep down inside the pieces of wood and unless you can thoroughly treat them you can't be sure you've thoroughly treated them so the way I did it was I used my garden hose outside and a steel wire brush and I just did the elbow grease and I scrubbed and I scrubbed and scoured and I just scrubbed the whole surface layer off of the pieces of wood I'm trying to get a little closer here without freaking everybody out I did strip it down so clean that you can actually see all of the fuzzy fungus starting to grow on it that you frequently get on new wood when you put it in a tank. So this piece here in particular is new enough, or newly fallen I should say, it still has its bark all over it. I Even with a wire brush that bark is still on there so thoroughly that it didn't even come off. Uh, most of the other pieces of wood, as you can see, are a little bit more soggy when I found them and when I did the wire brush treatment to them, I really removed a lot of softer surface material and if you look really close, you can actually see sort of striations and lines in the wood. That, you know, it looks like a pleco has been in there chewing on it or something. That's from my wire brush. And that was pretty much all I was able to do prior to putting them in the tank. So in this situation, I had the tank set up, but I did not have any fish in it at the time. So what I did was I treated the entire tank with hydrogen peroxide with the wood intact. Um, I put a quart in, which I don't even know how many uh, mils per gallon that works out to be, but it's way, way more than what you would do to treat a tank that had fish in it. You can treat a tank um, with hydrogen peroxide that has fish in it, but it's tricky, and in my experience, my personal experience, it's not worth it, so I'm not really even going to get into explaining or talking about how to do it. It's just not worth it. Don't worry about it. Um, but when the tank is empty, you can basically treat this as your facility for treating the wood you know I don't have a sink big enough that I can soak this branch but I can do it right here in the tank and that's what I did so I let it sit for two days with the hydrogen peroxide in there and then I added another quart of hydrogen peroxide 
let that sit for another two days and then i did a big water change and i began you know cycling that water out so it had four days of hydrogen peroxide and if you followed along with any of the earlier videos you could see it was looked like fizzy water you know it looked like carbonated water there were so many bubbles in there so between my scrubbing and between the hydrogen peroxide i'm confident that that wood is clean enough the other aspect of it is the difficulty and you know of getting the fish that are in here um i don't talk about fish as far as value and in, in terms of their dollars worth but for me to catch native fish it's just not a lot of investment i don't have it's not difficult for me to find them i don't necessarily get a lot of sentimental attachment so if these shiners that i bought as bait at a bait and tackle shop don't have parasites on them or something from this wood within another five or six weeks I will assume that this wood is free and clear of anything that's going to be in there that could harm the fish I've had people ask me what kind of wood it is how do I know whether it's going to leach any toxins into the water and I don't um, I, I, I would imagine there probably is some kinds of woods somewhere that you shouldn't put in a fish tank uh, but I don't know of any off the top of my head and I really don't imagine that's going to be an issue I can't imagine these pieces of wood in here are going to leach anything into this tank other than uh, some simple tannins and that's going to be about it so I'm not too concerned about that either it's coming from the same type of environment that the animals that are going to go in this tank are coming from so once again I wouldn't be putting this wood in with tropical fish I don't know how that would work but I just don't risk stuff like that um, the rocks are a different story. The smaller rocks in here, I began treating by putting them in pots of water and just boiling them for about 15 minutes and then scrubbing them off with the wire brush. And honestly, you don't even need a wire brush at that point. If you boil them for 15 minutes, a uh, nice stiff bristled uh, plastic scrub brush will just knock everything right off of it. It just comes right loose. Um, so I was doing that for a while. When I got to the bigger pieces of rock, I uh, decided, well, once again, what do I do? Um, this piece here, for example, this larger piece, both this slab here, well, all of these slabs here towards the end, especially this one here, I was thinking about putting it in the oven because it would be large enough. I could just set it in there on the middle rack. But I decided, you know what? If that wood's not getting treated, why go through all this effort of sterilizing the rock? I can do, you know... So what I did was I just ran the rock under really hot water and I got out my wire brush and I just scrubbed the rocks down with the wire brush and stripped them until they were nice and clean. And I'm sure that's more sterile than the wood was and then it all got treated with the hydrogen peroxide. So that's it. That's pretty much how I've treated all the stuff that went in this tank, prepping it for the fish to go in there. These shiners, I kind of expect some of them to die off here fairly soon. I'm really kind of surprised after three days now, four days now. Um, they're still doing fairly well. I've got no casualties that I can see. They're starting to calm down. Uh, I will be shooting some video very soon of me feeding them. They go nuts when I put food in there now. They used to really reluctantly come out. They'd kind of wait till I left and they'd zip up one at a time and grab something. Uh, they're finally starting to get used to me feeding them. So uh, hopefully real soon we'll do a video of that. It's really fun to watch them zipping and, you know, zinging around the tank. They're really fast, as you can probably tell. So the next video is going to be about the tank itself. We're going to talk about why I designed it the way I did, what I wanted to go for as far as how it looks and how it feels. Uh, we'll probably talk a little bit about stocking, what I can or can't put in it, why I'm thinking about what I'm thinking about, and all of that sort of stuff. So I hope that was helpful. Uh, again, my advice is I really wouldn't do wood that you find outside if you've got a tropical tank and you've got expensive or hard to come by fish if you've got fish that you've got sentimental value to you know fish you've had a long time I wouldn't go messing with finding wood outside and putting it in your tank I would just go ahead and stick with spending the money it's just worth it for me you know once this tank gets well established if I get an established community in here after you know some time and it's my fish and it's become my tank and settled in well, then I'll be treating it differently. Whether they're native fish or not, I won't be throwing oddball stuff in there and hoping everything will be okay. I'll be treating it a little differently. Uh, as I said, I was able to start this tank up with no fish in it at all, 
and work from there and now we've got some bait in here as sort of my test fish as long as they're fine for the next several weeks uh, we'll start working out what we can do uh, as far as additional stock so make sure you subscribe that way you don't miss any of the good stuff I got coming up this tank is going to be a lot of fun we got a long way to go before it's really settled in I'm still debating whether or not to put plants in it uh, so on and so forth so lots of good stuff coming up on this tank so don't forget to subscribe thanks again for watching this one I hope you enjoyed it and I will see you real soon on all those other ones I was talking about